Hello everyone and welcome back to our second season here as Villarreal Manager, another episode of the Villarreal series. Today, not only will we go through all of the start of the season stuff, including an absolutely massive transfer overhaul window that we had with this squad, but we've also got a Super Cup match, a potential trophy against Manchester City. It won't be easy, but I'm very excited for it. Very excited to show you the team we've built. So that being said, let's get right into it. Hello everybody, I'm Jake and welcome back to the series. As I mentioned, a pretty big episode today in terms of we've got a lot to cover. There won't be two games in this one, only one game, because there was a lot of transfers. I mean, a lot of transfer business, some of which was out of our hands, some of which we chose to do, but there's a lot to talk about. Before we get into all of that though, don't forget, smash the like button if you could. It really helps in how these videos perform. Just take two seconds, click it. I'd greatly, greatly appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't already, getting very close at the time of recording to 8,000. So if you've made it by the time this gets released, then thank you so much for getting us to that milestone. Comment down below what you think of the signings, who we could still potentially sign. There's also a Football Manager Discord linked in the description if you want to check that out. But I think it's time we get onto our transfers. Now, it should be noted that we got given a £5 million budget or maybe even less uh, in this transfer window. They gave me absolutely nothing, even though we won the Europa League and the finances were half decent. We also had a percentage of transfer revenue of about 60%. So we couldn't get all the money from players sales, but that was the only way to raise funds to bring people in. So bear that in mind, we did have to do some selling and therefore, I think this business that we did was very, very good. We started off by selling Mark Navarro, who we bought him for a free last season just as a backup. He didn't play too much and we sold him on for £500,000 to QPR in the championship. Serge Aurier had a lot of interest and as I mentioned, we had to sell a few players. At the age of 29, I think I may as well sell him. So he took £14 million for the guy. He was all right for his last season, but not what we're looking for in that right wing back position. It was a similar case with Mandy at centre-back. I actually really liked him last season, but he he wanted to leave the club when there was interest in him, so we let him go. He played well for us, but he went for 12.25 million off to Ukraine to Dynamo Kiev. He was a good centre-back, a very nice wide centre-back in particular, but unfortunately, he is no longer at the club. Another player that had some genuine interest in him was Bulai Dia, who was our backup striker last season and who I think actually did a pretty good job deputising for Moreno. Villarreal had only just brought him in for £10.25 million from Reims out in the French division, but Leipzig were interested amongst another club. I think it was Mönchengladbach. But Leipzig offered 17 million. And at that time, again, we didn't have too many funds. So we took the money for that, meaning we now needed a backup for our main striker, who is, of course, Gerard Moreno at this stage. Ivan Martin was an interesting one. He was a player that came back from a loan out at Girona, where he'd actually done very well. And I did have him in mind as being part of the first team squad this season. But when I looked at the players we had and the players I was potentially bringing in and the funds I wanted to raise... I decided this guy was never going to be a world-class player for us. He would have been a good squad player, but he's more of an attacking midfielder, which we don't use. And then on the left side, he is left-footed, so he's not really going to be an inverted player, which is what I'm trying to use on the wing. So we let him go. He's gone to Leverkusen. I'm sure he'll do very well over there, but we took about £4 million for him. The first sale that I would really say was taken out of my hands was Samuel Chukweze, who was actually really good for us last year and one of our highest scorers at the club. He's a player that still has bags of potential it seems now that he's out at Wolfsburg but basically his contract was running low I think he had a year left on it and he wanted crazy money I'm talking like £250,000 a week I suppose his good form actually hurt us in the end because then he wanted so much money we couldn't afford that so then it was a decision of do we keep him on and let him go on a free or do we capitalize on the interest in him and sell him on and that's what we did we sold him to Wolfsburg my old club in my football manager save of course for about 20 million I'm sure he'll be amazing for them but I am keeping an eye on him if there's ever a chance to bring him back to the club actually to note I should probably put him on a short list there we go clearly the scouts still do rate him but he is at Wolfsburg I'm sure he'll do great there and we lost him we also sold Xavi Quintilla another player that came back from loan he's just not very good to be honest he wasn't going to play too many games for us he went to Elche for two million pounds he can play left back can play centre back but can't do either one of them amazingly well another sale that we pulled off from a player who was out on loan was George Cuenca who is actually a centre back that we maybe could have done some him with because of a transfer deal that happened later down the line but at the time I didn't need him I saw an opportunity to get some money in for the Spaniard I don't think he's ever going to be world class but he has had two decent games for Dynamo Kiev where he has gone for eight million pounds 
down. So who knows? Maybe we made a mistake there. But we took that money and we began to reinvest in the squad. If we sort by date, you can see the players that we did bring in. The first one was a wide player who I absolutely love, Kirill Despidov. He's good on both wings and the Bulgarian is the kind of player that I always try and sign in football manager rebuilds. But the best part about him is his value. As you can see, he's a player worth about 25, 30 million. And when Chiquese left, I was looking for someone to cover his spot. And when we're talking £5 million for a player of his quality, I had to take it. He came from Ludogorets, so there was a bit of a cheaper fee involved than maybe it would be if we were buying him from a top five European league. But he's a great player. He is part of our squad. Number nine, I'm sure he'll do wonders for us. But our big sign-in, and I think our biggest of the summer, I could be wrong, was Tarek Lamptey. £40 million, Aurier leaving at right wing back, Rosas, a very good player, but I still want two good players in every single position. So when I was looking at the best right wing backs around, Tarek Lamptey was available from a relegated Brighton side for £40 million. Um, his valuation is way higher than that. He's a great player who suits our system down to the ground. So we decided to go all out for him to bring the youngster in. And it was proven right because in the first game of the season, we have had two La Liga games so far. He was immense. Scored two, assisted one, all from that right wing back spot Tarek Lamptey is going to be a massive part of how we play going forward but that wasn't it we actually made a few more signings obviously Bulai Dia going meant that we needed another striker to play back up to Gerard Moreno but then I thought you know what what if we can get a player that's as good if not better than Moreno and that way we can rotate them quite well make sure everyone is fit and firing and Amin Giori was a player that the scouts found that actually suited the complete forward position very well despite the fact that naturally he's been used as a wide player but he is now natural as a striker he's got very nice physicals mentals and technicals from what I've seen of him so far he's been a very good signing because he's doing what I wanted Moreno to do which is to hold the ball up dribble a bit pass it on to the players running on Moreno was a very good finisher but he seemed to lack that element of his game despite attributes showing that he should have been able to so we have signed this guy Amin Giori a Frenchman 22 years old 34 million pounds from Nice where he smashed it last year and he scored in his first game for us as well as assisting so I've got very big hopes for this guy up front and with Mandy going at the back I needed another centre-back option so I bought in Pierre Kalulu on loan from AC Milan they weren't really using him he didn't play too much last year but he's a player of quality we're paying 1.5 million pounds for the course of the loan he could play at wing back if we needed to, but he will be a wide centre back for us on the right hand side when needed. I think he's a good player and if it turns out well, we can make that deal permanent. We also made a bit of money by selling this guy, Manu Molanes, who is a 23 year old Spaniard. Again, another one that came back from a loan out of Espanol where he was okay, but not great. We just sold him onto Monaco for £7 million ish. He's not someone I was going to use. He's not any better than the other options we have in midfield. So he has left the club. And then one transfer that you'll see is very recent the final transfer we're going to look at is Juan Foyf. Uh, I didn't want to lose Juan Foyf. I thought he was a great player in that wide centre-back spot. He was a starter on the right-hand side next to Ignacio and Pau Torres. But unfortunately, he had a release clause. Borussia Dortmund activated it, £37 million, and he decided to leave the club. And we've got to replace him now. There is an argument in my head. I'll show you the squad depth screen now, actually, whilst I talk about this. But there is an argument in my head that I just let Alejandro Francis develop in this position, let him become the player that we know he can be, and then Pierre Kalulu can back up for him in that right centre-back spot. But I feel like I need something else. So there is a few centre-back targets we're looking at, a few we've made bids for, but how well that will turn out, I don't know. So now our team looks like this. We have Onana and Alvarez in goal. Centre-back options of Zagadou, Ignacio, Torres, Kalulu and Francis. Right wing-back options of Rosas and Lamptey. Left wing-back options of Pedraza, Grimaldo and Kennedy, who is also an option in that left wing spot. In central midfield, we've got Kessi, Parejo, Coquelin, Xavi Simons and where is he? Kenneth Wynn, who is developing very nicely the young 16 year old will be a star for us I am sure and then on the wing Giori can play there but I've taken him away because this isn't probably the position I'll use him in but I imagine it's going to be Danjuma and Despidov on one side with Pino and where is he there's a guy called Alex Biena Biena I don't know how to pronounce it but he's someone that I think we'll end up using somewhere in this forward line will rotate a lot but he is a 21 year old Spaniard who was out on loan at Girona last season in the second division and did very well for them so I'm hoping to make him part of the first team this year if he's good great if not we'll sell him on for a profit at the end of the season 
So that's pretty much everything. Giori and Moreno are the two striking options. We loaned out a very good young striker by the name of Fernino just because I didn't think he was ready yet and hopefully he will do well out at Marbella but who knows if he actually will. But that is that. That's our squad. Like I say we've still got some money to potentially bring in another centre back but it's a squad that I'm very very happy with. I think uh, this team will do very well over the course of this season. The first 11 is actually very good to look at now because ideally Right now, without bringing in another centre-back, this is my ideal starting eleven: Onana, Francis, Ignacio, Torres, Lamptey. This would be Grimaldo, but he's suspended. Parejo, Kessie, Pino, Despidov, and Amin, Giori. One thing to note as well, keep an eye on the Danny Parejo situation. This man has a contract for another couple of years. However, he has complained that his contract isn't enough, which I agreed with. I thought, you know what, we can give you a new deal, even though you're old, you're a key player. And if I give you, you know, 70, 80,000 pounds a week, I'd say that was worth the reward. He wanted 205 grand a week, to which I said no. He got in a huff, and that's only very recently. So we'll see how that develops, whether he's worth selling on. So we're ready to go into the Manchester City game. We're in decent. Fo I can't believe I forgot to show you. I can't believe I forgot to show you. We've already played two games this season. I said I was going to talk about it, and I completely forgot. Um, we smashed our friendlies, which I don't manage, and we looked very good in them. We then had our first match of the season away against Levante with our ideal starting 11, and we absolutely smashed it. 4-0. It's a brilliant performance and something that last season I don't think we would have won like that. I think away from home we were pretty poor last year. I would have said that would have been like a 1-1 draw. But a 4-0 away win gave me a lot of hope. Lamptey getting two, a new signing on his debut. Giori on his debut getting a goal as well. Pau Torres getting in there with a goal on top of that. But then we played uh, Real Sociedad with our backup team. I was resting most of our players for this Manchester City match, which was only a couple days later. And we were pretty good. We were dominant. We just conceded in the 93rd minute, despite there only being 92 minutes added on. Referee, I'm looking at you. Alexander Isaac got a chance last second, chipped the goalkeeper. Very annoying, but we move. So we are pretty much ready to get into the match. But before we do, I just want to cover something very quickly. Very recently, I did a Chelsea rebuild video. And about three minutes into that, I spent a couple minutes talking about a platform that I'm a big fan of which is so rare. Now they became a partner of the Jake Cooper channel which blew my mind because it's something that I've been using for a long time way before they got into contact. So when they said they wanted to make me a partner I was over the moon. It was the first sponsored type of content that I did on the channel and we are a permanent partner so I can talk about it all the time. Um, but the reason I want to talk about it right now is address a few of the concerns that we got in the comments because if I didn't do a good enough job of explaining this I do apologize but I feel like I did um, and that is with some of the risks that can come with playing so rare. So if we just quickly cover what so rare is in its basic format, it's a platform that allows you to collect digital, officially licensed cards from the likes of the Bundesliga, La Liga, Eredivisie, and many clubs around the world like Liverpool, PSG, and a bunch of other leagues. I know the Scottish League was recently added, and they're constantly building up the platform, and it looks really promising. And in my eyes, it's super fun to play because when you collect these cards, they don't just sit there. You use them in the fantasy football tournaments on so rare, where you pick a five-a-side team. And based on how them players perform, you can win rewards like other cards, which are then, of course, worth money because you have to buy these cards. So once you have that card, you can list it on the so rare market. So with the fact that there is a fantasy football element, that, of course, is based on real life performances. So if we took Pau Torres, for example, here, and this is a risk that could potentially be involved in the game. Let's say you had a Pau Torres card and he was doing well at Villarreal and his card was worth, say, £10. If Pau Torres suddenly starts playing awfully or he gets an injury, he's therefore going to be less desirable in the fantasy football side of the game. The same if he got a transfer to a bad club and people thought he wasn't going to play as well. Then his valuation would go down and your card is now worth less, meaning the investment you put in for the player is now not worth as much as what you put in. But of course, on the same end of that spectrum, if Pau Torres goes on to sign for Manchester City and do really well, he's then going to be worth more. So there is, of course, risks involved here. So all I would say, if I didn't cover this enough in the Chelsea video is just be responsible guys. Don't play this game with the last penny you've got in your bank account. Don't buy cards with money that you really need. Only do it if you've got some funds that you want to have a bit of fun with and you're not going to be too bothered if something happens to them. There is of course risks involved. So I think the underlying thing here is just be responsible. Do your research before you get involved. I mentioned in the Chelsea video, but there is a completely free side of So Rare where you can earn free cards and play the free fantasy side of the game. So if you just want to get involved in that way, I think it's a great way to get started. And if you decide later on down the line that you want to get involved, 
involved and buy the cards that actually cost something and are worth some money, then you can do that after doing some more research on the side. So if you want to play the free version of the game and just get involved that way, that's what I would suggest. You might enjoy it, but just be aware of the risks that will be involved if you do purchase a card. If you want to get involved, there's a link in the description which will take you to the so rare sign up page where you can make your account. And then if later down the line you decide to buy a card, I'll get a slight commission of whatever you pay for the card, which is obviously great at supporting the channel, but it's a platform that I love, a platform that I'm very happy to promote. Just be aware of the risks. I'm actually probably not going to talk about it again in any of these very real episodes, maybe even not on this channel at all. For a long time, because I do enjoy the platform, I've considered making a channel that only focuses on so rare and have that on the side. I do like a video a week, uh, as opposed to doing it on this channel. My concern would be if I made a video about so rare on this channel, let's say we have a Villarreal episode and a so rare episode and then back to Villarreal, there's a good chunk of you that won't be bothered about so rare. And therefore, if you don't watch that, I'm afraid the YouTube algorithm won't then show you when the new Villarreal episode comes out. So I'm going to focus purely on Football Manager on this channel, I have decided. So that's pretty much everything I want to talk about on that front. I did just want to mention that because there were a few concerns in the comments, but we can get back to the game and hopefully this will be a good result for us. But let's be honest, guys, I'm not expecting us to win this game at all. I have pretty much zero hope for this side in this game. As good as this first 11 is, Manchester City's worst player walks into our starting 11 as probably one of our best. So who knows what will happen here. Um, I'm also a bit concerned with playing Pedraza, who is good against weaker opposition, but I don't trust him anywhere near the level I trust Grimaldo. And already after six minutes, De Bruyne goes very close to scoring. It's a very good save from Onana. So all I'm saying is don't judge the team based on this performance. I think as the season goes on and this team bonds together, maybe we'd have the ability to take on Manchester City in a two-leg game. But in a one-leg match, in a Super Cup final, who knows what will happen. I decided to show you this one and not the first games of the season. One, because I wasn't done with the transfer business. And uh, two, I just thought the Super Cup is fairly important. I didn't show it last season because I didn't feel like we needed to because we didn't earn our way there. Villarreal had just won the Europa League last time around and that allowed us to be in the Super Cup, which we won against Chelsea. So if we can win it two years in a row, that'd be great. But we earned our right here. We won the Europa League last year and therefore we're here. So who knows? I wanted to show it this year. Is that Kylian Mbappe for for Manchester City and Harry Kane, right. What the hell? We're playing a Manchester City side that is not just got the likes of De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva and Ruben Diaz and Edison and Cancelo. They've signed Mbappe and Harry Kane. Usually they go for um, Haaland, but I feel like them two together would do even more than Haaland would. That's a very threatening 11. We'll be very, very, very lucky if we get anything from this match, but 25 minutes in, and possession has been going the way of Manchester City slightly. All the chances have been Manchester City, but still nothing of massively high XG. And for the first time in the game, and maybe the only time, so enjoy it, we have the ball in a highlight. And it is Despidov. He finds Jeremy Pino. That was a really good chance, actually. Jeremy Pino blasts it over the bar. I thought he did anyway. The play's carried on. Did it hit the crossbar or did they just take a really quick goal kick? I don't know what happened, but um, yeah, Mbappe's there. Alejandro Francis having a very good game on a 7.2 for the youngster, considering he is dealing with one of the world's best players in Mbappe. Pure pace, pure frightening energy, pure skill. And uh, Francis has proven pretty good so far. 7.2 average match rating. Onana also playing well. Our front line, not so much, but it's what I expect in a game like this. They're going to struggle when they do get their chances. And here's Ruben Diaz. He hits the ball up the pitch. We do win it though, Despidov. Slices the ball forward towards Amin Giori. What a goal. What a goal that was. One, what a pass from Despidov. He's just cut across the ball and sliced it. I haven't seen anything like that in the Football Manager match engine. Let's watch that again. So Ruben Diaz clears it here. Pau Torres heads it down and Despidov just slices it through to Giori, who's just on side. He takes a touch and curls into the corner. A fantastic goal. Link up play between two of our new players. Our signings are proving good so far, guys, right? Um, it's a bit of a smash and grab from us here so far, but we'll definitely take that. At least we can say at one point we were in the lead, even if it doesn't end up being that way. What a goal. Apologies if that clap was too loud, by the way. I realised I did that right in front of the microphone. So if anyone was wearing earphones, I do apologise if you are now deaf. And But here we go. It's another highlight with us on the ball. Alejandro Francis takes his time, finds Ignacio. It's very promising here, though, if Alejandro Francis is having a good game in a match like this. Maybe he can just step into one fourth shoes and we don't need to waste money um, on a new defender. Maybe we can just keep the money in the bank until we need it somewhere else. And that might be something that I do. I was definitely planning on getting rid, um, uh, buying a new centre-back, should I say, but he's looking really good this game, Francis, and about as tough of a test as you could have Kane and Mbappe. 
And I feel like the more I say it, he's got more of a chance of messing up. So I won't mention him again. But Lamptey, that's a good ball through to Amin Gyori, who's through again and he scores. His third goal of the season, he's only played two times for us, I believe. I think he came on as a sub, actually, in that Sociedad game. But in two starts, should we say, he has scored three goals now and he scored two here against Manchester City. What a goal that was. He takes it down really well from that Lamptey ball and he finishes. And um, as much as I still think Manchester City could come back, I'm definitely taking the positives out of this right now. We have won a half against Manchester City almost quite comfortably. We've taken our chances really well. It was the lack of clinicality, if that's a word, last season that I think affected us a lot. And um, we missed a lot of chances with Moreno up top, which is kind of fair because we didn't have Bull idea for most of the season due to injury. So Moreno was playing every single week. He looked tired. And I think now with Giori here as well, we can rotate them enough that they can both be big players for us this year. This doesn't mean the end of Jared Moreno, not at all. Um, but if Gori keeps playing like this, I'm going to put him in all of the big games. He's on for a hat-trick right now. Oh, uh, Andre Onan is having a stormer though, isn't he? Let's be real. And Bappe gets him behind. He's carrying an injury. His electric pace gets him in. He takes a shot. Looks like it's going in the top corner. But Onana does enough to get rid. And we survive the following corner as well. So about 60 minutes in. And we are 2-0 up. Great performance so far. Alejandro Francis, Giori, and Onana, as well as Lamptey, apparently on an 8.2. They're all having great games. I think about now is the time we'll start making some substitutions. So I'm thinking... Yeremi Pino, he's been fine, but on a 6.5, he can come off four. Let's bring on Dan Juma on that side. Why not? And let's let the game advance a little bit more. Now let's move on to that left back spot where Grimaldo is out. So Kennedy is going to come on for Pedraza. Hopefully that won't bite us in the teeth because of course, a bite us in the teeth, that's not a phrase, is it? I don't know what I'm trying to say there. Um, but anyway, <laughs> Kennedy is not a player who is um, very defensively inclined, let's say. But he had, did do a really good job for us in the end of last season, towards the end. He was a good player there. So I'm giving him, I'm having some faith in him. I'm having some faith in the guy. Um, Lamptey as well looks a bit tired. Let's bring him off for Rosas. And I believe that's all the subs we can make. So let's just leave it at that. Good game from Lamptey. Good performance. Rosas will do the defensive side of the game just as well as Lamptey, even if he isn't as good going forward. But that's a great position for us now, that right wing back spot. We've got two very good players there. And speaking of two, we have beat Manchester City 2-0. We've got two Super Cups in a row. What a start to the season this is. And this promises. Um, is this what, what I'm trying to say? This is promising? Yeah, there you go. This is promising. Because if we beat Manchester City here, who knows? It promises more trophies in the future, you would assume, if we can beat a team like Man City. Um, I mean, the first 10 minutes were a bit worrying. But after that, we look very good. The players doing a little dance. Pau Torres lifts a trophy up. And it's another trophy for us here. As Villarreal boss, two Super Cups, one Europa League. Let's add a La Liga, a Champions League and a Spanish Cup before we're done here. I reckon it's possible. With this side, we could do anything really. What a match, what a win. 2-0, onwards and upwards. Alejandro Francis, you have just proved to me that I'm not replacing you. Let's take a look at the wide centre-back. He's good, isn't he? He's going to be good. He is going to be a very good player for us. Age of 20, maybe won't develop as much as we want him to. But first team football this season could be massive in what kind of player he turns out to be. And we're now in good spirits, morale's high, and we are ready to get on with our season. I'll probably bring it back sometime around October. Let's say Barcelona and Atletico Madrid could be a good time to bring it back. Maybe our first few Champions League games. Whatever it may be, we've got a lot of games to get into. So I'll get on that and hopefully you'll see the next episode fairly soon. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the transfers, the match, and thank you to anyone who did listen about the So Rare thing as well. I just wanted to put it out there. The community that we have on this channel is amazing. So hopefully me talking about that addressed any concerns anyone may have. But thank you guys. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next episode. Up the Villarreal. Let's go.